If you have a patient that presents with a knife wound to the posterior shoulder, just below the spine of the scapula, approximately one inch from the acromion, examination revealed weakened lateral rotation, but normal abduction of the shoulder joint. Which nerve has been damaged? In this case, the suprascapular nerve is what you're looking for. And this can be fuddle people in some instances because they have memorized that the suprascapular nerve is involved in abduction initiation and in lateral rotation through the uh, supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscles. And this says that abduction is normal. Well, the important thing here is the relationship of where this injury is. So don't forget to pay attention to the anatomical location of injuries as well. This particular knife wound is posterior and below the spine of the scapula. That will be after the point of innervation of the supraspinatus muscle, and therefore it will not be affected by that trauma. What will be affected is the continuation of that nerve as it comes around the greater scapular notch and takes out the infraspinatus muscle, which would reduce lateral rotation. So therefore, knowing just the muscle's major function and paying more attention to the distribution patterns of the nerve will have a higher yield than knowing the fine details of where those muscles attach. A patient arrives at the ER after falling out of a tree. They complain of pain in the left forearm that radiates to the cubital fossa. You see bruising and expect a fracture, but prior to sending them for x-ray image, your physical exam reveals flexion weakened at digits 1 through 3 and weakened pronation of the forearm. The patient is unable to make the OK sign with their thumb and index finger. What nerve is likely damaged? Well, there's a couple red flags in this particular question. One is that there's damage to digits of 1 through 3. That involves the thumb and the index and the middle finger. So we're not thinking about the ulnar distribution in the forearm. But we do have to think about forearm muscles because the digits are supplied by forearm power producers. So whenever you see digital weakness, you have to have something going on in the power producer region, which is the flexor compartment. Now, that means that the pronation has to tie into this. And another red flag is the OK sign. That OK sign using the thumb needs the distal phalanx to be functional, which would mean that the flexor pollicis longus must be knocked out. And what do we see here? That this must be the deep muscles of the forearm that are affected, meaning the anterior interosseous nerve is knocked out. What would this do? Well, the anterior interosseous does not supply the profundus tendons on the um, ulnar side. It only supplies the radial side profundus tendons and the flexor pollicis longus. And that would be enough to create the problem with the OK sign. If it were posterior interosseous, there would be extension problems. Same with radial. If it were the ulnar, there would be medial compartment and medial digit problems. And if it were recurrent branch of the median only, that would mean that the flexor pollicis longus tendon would still be functional and uh, there'd still be the possibility of making the OK sign, even though the thumb would not be quite as mobile at doing it or have as much power.